Ah, uh, we're live, folks. Welcome to the first episode that I've ever done of um, a Facebook Live event. I'm really excited because I know that there are a lot of questions that folks have had um, over the past few months. And I think this is a great outlet that Facebook has provided us with to be able to answer those questions en masse. And if you're going to join us, you have an opportunity to ask questions live. Um, a little bit about myself. I am a, a mom of two. I have a two-year-old and an 18-year-old. A little bit of an age difference there. Um, I'm a social worker. My background is in social work. I'm a personal trainer um, and a cross-country ski coach. And I also manage a, a um, statewide sports team. Um, so coaching is a passion of mine. It's something that I love, sports, athletics. Um, training and motivation is something that is just near and dear to my heart. Um, I'm a self-appointed fitness junkie and geek, and so this is a, a great outlet for me to be able to share my knowledge um, and information with, with folks. Um, when I became pregnant with my second baby, I was kind of um, uh, in the really um, kind of absorbed in my athletic endeavors. And when we became pregnant, I really found myself feeling afraid um, of how the pregnancy and beyond the pregnancy would impact my ability to operate as an athlete um, and as a fit mom. And I learned so much along the way. And in that process, I also learned that there were so many women that were wondering the same things that I was wondering. And I, I joined Facebook groups and um, discussion forums and um, talked with my midwife and talked with other ladies in other moms groups and um, heard just kind of similar feedback, just this general lack of understanding about what happens with our bodies when we get pregnant and um, post-pregnancy and how to continue being athletic during that time. Um, questions like, Am I going to gain a ton of weight? Am I going to be able to lose it? Is my body going to be completely out of control? And it, it does make sense um, that these fears arise during pregnancy because there is so much happening internally that we are literally unable to um, control and manipulate with our own will <laughs> or, um, or just knowledge or intellect. And so it's a scary kind of um, unsure time for a lot of women. And... I, it's just been a passion of mine to inspire and motivate women to continue with their athletic endeavors during pregnancy and beyond pregnancy, to do it safely, and to do it in a way that ensures long-term health and fitness throughout their entire life. Um, I really feel like the fitness industry is stuck in this um, instant fix type mentality where we um, want results right now. and. Um, we, when you get pregnant and when you aim to maintain a healthy lifestyle during pregnancy and beyond pregnancy, that all or nothing mentality that like we need a fix right now, it, it doesn't work. Um, and so, yeah, so my goal really with, um, my coaching business has been to, um, work with women not only during pregnancy and after pregnancy um, to help ensure that their nutrition and their diet and their exercise, etc., is is on track and on board, um, but but really, really focusing on mindset and getting into the nitty gritty of why we aim to um, you know sculpt and shape our body a certain way. What are we hoping to get from that experience? Are we are we looking to fill something that? Um, that we maybe need to fill elsewhere. Um, there, it, for a woman, it's it's not uncommon to have you know obsessions about her physical appearance, and when you get pregnant, those obsessions become magnified again because there's so much about your body that you can't control anymore. And so, really diving into mindset and understanding um, the truth of our uh, personal values, our motivation, our goals. Um, and uh, digging into the reasons why, you know, the most common reasons why we tend to self-sabotage our goals um, and uh, we self-sabotage, you know, digging into the reasons why we self-sabotage not only in the fitness industry but in our work and home life as well because they are all interconnected. 
So it's been an awesome program and I've really been blessed with some incredible women. Um, and I, I feel like I, I learn as much about um, uh, pregnancy and mindset from them as they do from me. And um, really, I, I see myself as just kind of a collector of wisdom um, because I want to share this information. Like my goal is to just share it and to share as much as I can for free to put it out there um, in many different formats. Um, and so, yeah, so I, before, um, so just wanted to give you a little bit about myself um, and then hop into some common questions that I get about fitness and diet in pregnancy and also fitness and diet in um, post-pregnancy and the postpartum period. Um, and of course, the common disclosure, I'm not a doctor. Um, I'm a social worker by trade. I'm a personal trainer, but I don't have a medical background. Um, and so my um, input and advice and insight is based on personal experience of myself, personal experience of the women that I've worked with, um, just the he heaps of research that I've done and the reading that I continue to do every day to be able to shape my own personal coaching philosophy. So, so that is where my input comes from. It's not medically, um, I'm not a doctor, so take that for what it's worth. Um, a question that I get a lot um, from my clients um, when they're pregnant is in regards to macros and when they're pregnant and if you haven't been or if you're not familiar with counting um, macros it's essentially um, counting the um, amount of grams of carbohydrates fats proteins um, and uh, carbohydrates fats proteins um, and being able to use those macros to uh, shape your physique, shape your health and nutrition. And so what ends up happening most common when women get pregnant, when they first get pregnant, they, um, they, they get really weird cravings. I mean, it's true. <laughs> um, oftentimes, um, new mamas will start to crave the carbohydrates like crazy. And a lot of my um, pregnant clients, particularly in that first trimester, um, the first three months of pregnancy will come to me and say, I'm eating so much bread and I sabotaging everything that I can do. And you know, there's, there's no hard and fast rule to that, but except for the fact that no, you're not sabotaging everything that you can do. Um, if you're craving, if you're craving bread, it's really hard to restrict yourself in that pregnancy phase. There's a lot of reasons why your body is craving certain foods. A lot of them are hormonal. When you become pregnant, your estrogen and your progesterone levels just skyrocket higher than they've ever been before in your entire life. That can influence food cravings. Um, very similar to PMSing in that sense. You know, when we tend to crave um, carby, starchy, sweet things during PMS, um, it's very hormonally related. Um, another thing that can cause these types of food cravings, um, particularly in the first trimester, um, is fatigue. Your body is going through a lot of changes, so you're going to be tired. And um, the natural physiological response to fatigue is to want to get a dopamine rush, which is easily accessible through carbohydrates or sugar. Um, so it makes sense that your body is craving carbohydrates. And there is that, um, you know, depending on the person, there is, you can either, um, monitor and continue to track it or you can decide you know this is only three months of my life i'm gonna just go with it and let it happen and see what happens um that is personally what i chose to do um i chose to just trust my instincts and sure enough um and it was nerve-wracking and i was a mess um and i hired a coach myself to guide me through that process and uh, um after the birth of our daughter i just kind of stepped back and said wow i could have trusted my body the entire time i would have been fine so if you're having those particular cravings um in it, it, it in the first trimester it will probably catch you off guard and surprise you but know that there's a hormonal and a fatigue related to um another question i get commonly um from my clients that are pregnant um, in regards to diet is the rapid weight gain and this can be really new for some folks if you've never particularly first-time pregnancies you're not used to you know jumping on the scale and being three pounds heavier the next day don't 
panic. Really don't panic. And if your doctor tells you, sorry, but you're gaining too much weight, really think critically about is this weight or is this water retention? I've had clients that have walked in to the birthing center, 50 pounds overweight and walked out 30 pounds less than what they walked in as because of that water retention. Again, hormonally related. Um, uh, estrogen um, tends to cause our bodies to preserve and save water. So that, that can very well be a hormonal thing. Um, so if you're gaining weight rapidly and you have true medical concerns about it, definitely talk to your doctor about it, but don't let that be cause or reason or concern to be fearful. Um, it, it can be something as simple as water retention. Um, proteins and protein powders is another question that I get a lot from pregnant mamas. I'm pregnant. Um, how much protein should I be eating? Should I be even consuming protein powder? I, you know, the protein powder thing is kind of up to your own individual discretion. There are a lot of women that, um, tend to stay away from protein powders that have the additives in it. Um, but you can get some pretty natural protein powders. There's a protein powder called BioPure that's just literally whey protein isolate, nothing else. I think Quest even, um, Quest protein powder is a pretty clean protein. Jamie Eason has that protein powder line that is a pretty clean protein powder line um, because you know that you're, you're um, it's so just so important to ensure that what you're eating um, during the time of pregnancy is a, a pure, um, comes from a pure source um, and you can optimize nutrition from the, that food as much as possible. Um, and then along the lines of supplements, um, uh, I know that um, a lot of women get a little freaked out about going to the gym when they find out they're pregnant because they can't take their pre-workout anymore. Um, so, you know, can you now go to the gym without no effects or no effects, no explosives or um, protein or um, uh, workout supplements? And again, it's along the same lines as the protein powder. It's just there, there have been no clinical trials around um, uh, workout supplements and pregnant women. Um, and if there have, it hasn't been extensive. So it's, we just don't have enough data to say. Um, that being said, uh, I know a lot of women will still continue to drink a cup of coffee. There has been some um, longitudinal studies around caffeine intake in pregnancy, um, and they have been able to say um, with sure effect that around 200 milligrams of caffeine um, is perfectly safe um, for a pregnant woman. And so even if that's, you know, popping a cup of coffee before you go to the gym, that could be enough to boost you and, and get your way out. Just remember, it's only nine months um, and you'll, it really does go by fast and you'll be able to get out the other side and continue to go back to your pre-workout supplements. Um, in terms of exercise and pregnancy, these questions are always all over the board, but they're generally, there's a lot of fear about exercise and pregnancy, and it makes sense. Your body's changing so quickly. And at the end of the day, again, trust you, trust your body, trust your wisdom. If your doctor is um, telling you, there are some, there are some still some old school doctors out there that will tell you that you need to keep your heart rate below 140, that you can't squat, um, that you can't lift heavy weights. And if they do tell you that, um, don't be afraid to question them. Don't be afraid to say, can you show me the research? Can you show me the literature that shows that this is um, a safe and effective protocol for pregnant women or that I shouldn't be doing this? Um, remember at the end of the day that we've been pregnant and having babies since the beginning of time. And I guarantee you there have been women that have squatted <laughs> while pregnant and things have turned out just fine. Um, same with the heart rate over 140 beats per minute. So again, if your doctor errs on the side of caution, um, don't hesitate to just, to just question, you know, can you show me the research? Can you show me where you base this recommendation on? Um, also be honest with your doctor, let him know, let him or her know this is an activity that I have um, uh, been involved in for a very long time. I'm comfortable doing it. Uh, is this something that um, you can tell me is an absolute should or shouldn't? And a doctor should be willing to have that conversation with you authentically and upfront. If they aren't willing to have that conversation with you, then perhaps it's time to find a new doctor. Um, I can tell you that I, uh, it, it's, it is, the, the one caveat I would add to that is that during pregnancy is probably not the best time to learn a completely brand new sport. Uh, your body is already fatigued and exhausted. You've got a lot going on. Um, don't think you're going to master, um, 
you know, a, a triathlon <laughs> um, during pregnancy. Um, you know, if you want to go play and have fun, awesome. But if you're looking for a consistent and rigorous training, um, stick to a sport or an activity that your body is already conditioned and used to. Um, this is particularly important as you get later into the trimester, um, particularly second and third trimester, when you're, <laughs> hi, Sierra! <laughs> Oh, um, so this is particularly important when you get into the uh, later later trimesters because your body is changing so quickly and it's important that you're performing a sport or an activity that is comfortable to you already so that not only are you dealing with the variability of a changing body, but you're not also dealing with the variability of a new sport. Um, so that's kind of the 411 on pregnancy topics or questions that I get a lot from pregnant women in regards to their changing body, um, health, diet, nutrition, and fitness. Um, so let's move on to postpartum. Um, but I'll break there. Does anybody have any questions? Anything they want me to address or talk about in particular? Nope. Okay, so I'll go on and start talking about postpartum and common concerns in the postpartum phases of pregnancy. Um, and this is a big one and um, because I really do believe that in our medical community, we spend a lot of time talking to pregnant women um, about their pregnancy, preparing them for their pregnancy, preparing them and their bodies and their babies for pregnancy, and then the baby comes and folks tend to disappear after a while and um, oftentimes mamas are left feeling like what's next what am I supposed to do um, during pregnancy I've created all these broad ambitious goals for myself and what life is going to be like post pregnancy and it's not like that at all it kind of feels like shit hits the fan um, and it can be a um, it can be a little bit overwhelming for moms um, and so really this is a great post pregnancy is a great time to hire a coach um, whether it be a sports coach a nutrition coach, a life coach, um, someone that can be that extra ear to help you, motivate you, guide you, and keep you accountable. There are going to be so many things happening in your life at that point that, um, yeah, hiring a coach is great to keep you centered. Um, and so things that are most common that come up in the post-pregnancy phase in terms of diet, nutrition, and exercise. Um, a lot of questions I get are um, macro counting around breastfeeding. So again, macros being the carbohydrates, proteins, and um, fats, and where to adjust calories while breastfeeding. And this is there isn't really a hard and fast line for this. Um, for example, during pregnancy, the general rule is that you increase your caloric intake by 200 calories, but breastfeeding can be a little bit different. Some women will start breastfeeding and they'll find that they're losing weight quickly and some women don't lose weight quickly at all. Um, the hormones that are required to um, uh, create or create um, breast milk actually act as a, um, a hormone that will uh, stop your body from releasing fat, which makes sense. I mean, if you think evolutionarily, um, you really have to preserve a certain amount of body fat in order to breastfeed. So your body is creating that hormone that is going to retain some fat. So some women experience that differently. Some women lose weight really easily and actually have a problem stopping losing weight, like they have a concern that it's coming off too fast, and some women just really get stuck. Um, and so if you're finding that you're stuck um, and you're breastfeeding and the breastfeeding is consistent and um, on point, then um, a few things you can do is just to sit back and do an analysis of your calories um, and just do like a, a week log of what it is that you're eating and total that up. Just give a total, complete, honest log of what it is that you're eating. Total that up and at the end of the week, look and see where you're at. Are you having an inordinate amount of calories? For example, are you eating maybe 25 to 2,700 calories? Um, and if it's in that range, if it's over the 2,500 range for most women, now this isn't a general, I'm just, this is just a general recommendation. So it's not a recommendation for you individually, but for most women, if after you've done that kind of weak assessment, if you're finding that you're consuming over 2,500 calories, I would recommend taking it down by 100 calories, waiting a week, taking it down by 100 calories, waiting a week. Now, this is actually really easy to do. It could be that I, that you're just eating uh, an extra handful of almonds, and all you have to do is stop eating an extra handful of almonds. That may be enough to kick your metabolism into gear, and then you can start losing weight um, while breastfeeding. So it really depends. The breastfeeding, because your hormones are not in a homeostasis, they're still fluctuating after that birth. It's really important to play with it and just kind of regard it as um, like an experiment on yourself. How much can you get away with eating and still continue to lose weight? 
Um, so the, the like classic, you know, um, diet plans of 12 to 1500 calories, just don't even do it. You're going to burn yourself out. You're going to get adrenal fatigue. Um, don't risk it. Um, and again, that's a hard pill to swallow for us because we're, we have this idea that we're going to get back into our, you know, our post baby body. And so I'm going to restrict to 1500 calories, da, da, da. And it's not going to set you up for long-term success. And I, I know that's a hard it's a hard pill to swallow, but it, it's the it's the truth. Um, another question that I get a lot um, about in in regards to nutrition in the postpartum phase is um, once you enter the six month and then the one year phase, what to expect in terms of dietary nutrition. And you know, I like to say that those first three months after having a baby, it's as if your baby is sleeping and then all of a sudden it wakes up and it becomes this little um, bouncy human being that really does kind of require more of your attention. And at that point, the the, um, the six to nine month mark, um, you really do have to focus more on um, keeping, keeping um, up with the routine of the baby and then it becomes a little bit more stressful to start doing such as things like um, meal prepping, meal planning, um, oftentimes those things become secondary on the list of importance for mamas. And so while their goal out there still is to um, uh, maintain and regain their overall health and fitness and weight, um, uh, it ends up becoming a secondary necessity because at the six month, four to six month mark, the baby really kind of amps up their need and demand of you. Um, so the, the trick there at the six to nine month mark, it's to plan. Um, it's to sit down and, and plan and um, sit down with your partner and really think through what foods do I like, what foods are good, what am I most likely to adhere to. So if I gave you a scale of one to five and one was I can absolutely do this and five, this is the hardest freaking thing you've ever asked me to do. You know, I want you to come up with a diet plan that's around like two, one or two. Um, again, you're still assuming that your calories aren't super super restrictive, particularly if you're breastfeeding still, you want to be able to have calories that you, a calorie allotment that you can play with. Um, and you want to be able to eat foods that are pleasurable to you and that you can adhere to. Um, so you can see that diet and exercise in the postpartum phase is really different than what we've ever done um, as athletes and as fit mamas before we had babies. Um, before I had a baby, it was very common for me to just go on a crash. You know, I'm going to cut out sugar for 10 days and I would be fine. And doing that now becomes really hard because... Um, because you're tired and the more you restrict or the more you tell yourself no, the more it becomes um, a desire to actually do it. It's like your inner toddler is rebelling against you. Um, oh, it's Sean, hi. <laughs> yeah, dad's rock too, Sean, <laughs> you know it. <laughs> ah, so cool, so cool. Don't you love social media? Um, so exercise in the postpartum phase, um, there, there are, uh, there are a lot of, you know, again, you got to adhere to what your doctor says. So the general rule is six weeks after you have a baby, you refrain from intensive exercise. I've worked with mamas that have adhered to that. Like it's the word of God. And I've worked with mamas that have just kind of gotten back and started riding the bike and going for walks and they've been fine. And again, talk to your doctor. If there's a specific recommendation, follow it. But if they recommend something that you don't necessarily feel is true to your own body, question them um, and have that conversation with them. Know again, at the end of the day, you are your own expert and you know what you can afford. Um, oftentimes it is really comforting um, within those first two months to just strap the baby in the ergo or the baby carrier and walk around the block. That is a huge preventative measure um, to prevent postpartum depression. Um, it's a great bonding opportunity between you and your baby. Um, in fact, within those first three months, any exercise that you can do where you can strap your baby to you and do the exercise while you're wearing the baby, go for it. It's not only giving you the added weight of the baby, so you can make that an, into an, a, a really a legit exercise, but it's a bonding opportunity for you and the baby. It's going to help the baby sleep better at night. The baby's going to smell you. Um, use it as an exercise. It's a mind shift, right? So if you were an athletic person before having a baby, um, the idea of strapping, you know, eight pounds to your front chest in an ergo and doing squats in the garage might sound a little silly. 
but we're not looking at the sprint. This is not a sprint, this is a marathon. This is a lifetime of fitness. And again, if you go for the crash course during pregnancy and postpartum, you are going to burn out. You're going to burn out because your hormones are changing, your adrenals are changing, you're experiencing fatigue. Always keep those in mind. Um, every single little bit helps. My, my theory is consistency, not, um, consistency, not um, intensity. And it works. It really does work. I'm a living testament to the fact that it works. My clients are living testaments to the fact that it works. Don't doubt the fact that it works. Um, uh, so uh, another question that I get a lot from postpartum moms is that common um, postpartum poof in the belly. Um, and if you're experiencing, um, and it's really very noticeable, particularly if you wake up in the morning and you have flat abs, but your lower um, stomach is a little bit poofy, this can be frustrating. And I'm sure that you all have heard of diastasis recti. It seems to be a very, lately, a very common discourse among the fitness industry. Um, and if you do suspect that you have diastasis recti, I highly recommend you go to Jessie Mundell's site. She's a physiotherapist. It's J-E-S-S-I-M-U-N-D-E-L-L. -S 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 -L, and she will walk you through step by step how to test for diastasis recti but essentially it's the it's the separation of the ad, uh, the transverse abdominal walls um, and it happens because your stomach is growing. It's a natural separation. It happens to most women that are pregnant, but not all women does that separation close. And so that ends up resulting in um, a poof of the stomach because those ab muscles are not as tight and as solid as they were before. But it can also lead to um, hernias. It can lead to um, um, more, more medical conditions that can be problematic later on. So even if you suspect that you have a very small separation of in the transverse abdominis it is worth taking the time to check out jesse mundell's site and um, follow um, her recommended exercises to heal that transverse abdominis that separation because even in the long term it can be problematic um, i'll tell you that if you're an exercise junkie and if you're looking for that that burn and that like rush from exercise her exercises are not going to give that to you <laughs> they're pretty low-key um, and because they're working the small muscles they're working that small microfibers of the transverse abdominis so it's not something that you're going to want to strap your heart rate monitor to and go for it um, but it's so so worth it i really recommend it um, other things to consider during postpartum and the um, um, exercise particularly in those first six months um, you you're going to have to prioritize sleep it's there's just no way around it particularly if you're looking to get your fitness back if you're looking to get your fit mom bod back you're you have to prioritize sleep. Again, it's another hard pill to swallow for us type A exercise adrenaline junkies. Um, but if you don't get sleep, your body is not going to heal. There is not going to be a growth of muscles. Um, I mean, if you think about it with, you know, it with, with whenever we know um, in terms of whenever we go exercise that it is actually the rest period after the exercise, the rest period in which our muscles are regrowing and repairing that tear that then they become stronger. And the same is true with our entire physiology. So childbirth um, is... Um, the biggest event, one of the biggest, hopefully it is the biggest event that your body will ever go through. Um, and it does take time to heal. Um, and jumping right back into the gym, um, pushing yourself harder when um, you're fatigued and exhausted can really set you up for um, some long-term lack of motivation and just apathy. And, um, and it's, it's, a, it's a sticky place to play with. Um, a good way to know that you are losing motivation and probably need more sleep is if you're just not feeling excited about your regular routines. Um, perhaps you exercise and the next day you wake up and you're just feeling sore and cranky. That's a really good indicator that you're um, experiencing fatigue and that you need to get more sleep. Um, and, you know, give it a shot. If you think, if you question that maybe you're working it too hard in that postpartum phase with your exercise routine and you need to back off a little bit, don't doubt that. Again, you are the expert on your body um, and it is to, to be able to back off even for a day, that might be all you need um, to be able to hit the gym the next day and to perform as best as you can. Um, so that's 
uh, the first Facebook Live event that I've ever done. Um, but we, um, it was good to have this opportunity to talk with you all about um, some of the biggest concerns that I've heard in pregnancy um, and postpartum around nutrition and fitness. And if you want to learn more about me, there's my website, katiereem.com. Notice that there's no E after the Katie. I don't know. Blame my parents for that. K-A-T-I-R-E-H-M. And if you go to my website, um, right there on the home page, there's a little um, link that says sign up for exclusive content. If you guys sign up for exclusive content today, it's just available today, um, I, you'll immediately get a, um, a, a five-step guide that I put together that will help you break through weight loss plateaus. And it is a clinically proven, easy to implement, you can implement it today, guide to break through weight loss plateaus. So I hope you guys do that. And I look forward to talking with you soon. Ciao. Mwah.